Good evening, everyone. Today I'm here to present a case on hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. This is the 15th case of the gynecology series. So a patient is an 18 year old female. She had complaints of absence of periods for six months. Her menstruation history, she had similar complaint occurred twice before in the past, but on both occasions, menstruation returned. So she was not too concerned. Her period started at the age of 12 years and were initially regular. A little brief about the patient. Uh, she has been facing the absence of periods for six months and uh, it started at 12 years and it was regular. And she was a little concerned since in the previous time when her periods missed twice before it used to return, but then this time it didn't return. So she visited the clinic to investigate it further. Social history, she runs most days and reports a healthy diet, avoiding carbohydrate, foods and meat. So the diet that she intakes is not healthy, but then she thinks it's healthy because uh, she thinks that carbohydrate is not good and meat consumption is not good for her health. So her diet is not very good. Medical and medication history, she has no medical history of note and denies any medication. Objective data on examination, the woman is tall and thin with a body mass index of 15.5 kg per meter square. There is evidence of fine downy hair growth on her arms. So this examination is important since if the woman was shorter in height, it might be a genetic disease or a chromosomal disease like Turner syndrome. But then she was tall and uh, she had uh, fine hair growth on her arms, which means her secondary sexual characteristics were well developed. But then her BMI was low because the minimum range of BMI is 18 kg per meter square and hers is 15.5. Her heart rate is 86 per minute and blood pressure is 100 by 65 mmHg. Abdominal examination reveals no scars or masses and genital examination is not performed. Further lab parameters, her follicle stimulating hormone is pretty borderline. Her luteinizing hormone is also very much near the lower range. Her estradiol is low, her prolactin is high and her testosterone is normal. So the patient is most probably not suffering from polycystic ovarian syndrome and uh, amenorrhea could be observed in PCOS, but then the patient's testosterone is normal and her BMI is low. So assessment, the diagnosis, the woman has evidence of hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. She has low estradiol levels associated with low gonadotrophin stimulation from the anterior pituitary. This may be due to various pituitary or hypothalamic causes, but in this case clearly relates to anorexia nervosa and possibly excessive exercise. So the patient's uh, gonadotrophic hormones were low and the patient's, patient was facing pituitary problems. And uh, this was mostly caused due to anorexia nervosa. This is a condition where a person gets conscious about what they eat and they start to avoid certain food items which they think as unhealthy. So this patient thought that carbohydrates and meat consumption is not good for her and she was taking very minimal diet. And that is why her BMI was low and that caused this condition in this patient. The raised prolactin is consistent with stress and does not need to be investigated further. So hyperprolactinemia might have other reasons, but in this patient, it was consistent with stress. So there is no need of further investigations. At a BMI below 18 kg per meter square, menstruation tends to cease, returning once the BMI increases again. So the cause of her amenorrhea is mentioned here since she has 15.5 kg per meter square of BMI. Uh, it was the cause why her menstruation was not occurring. Signs and symptoms for this condition, loss of menstrual periods, decreased energy, mood changes, and infertility. About this condition, Hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism is due to problems with either the hypothalamus or pituitary gland affecting the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. This axis consists of the uh, gonads in a 
in a person and along with hypothalamus and pituitary gland it is known as hpg axis hypothalamic disorders result from a deficiency in the release of gonadotropic releasing hormone while pituitary gland disorders are due to a deficiency in the release of gonadotropins from the anterior pituitary gnrh is the central regulator in reproductive function and sexual development via the hpg axis gnrh is released by gnrh neurons which are hypothalamic neuroendocrine cells into the hypophyseal portal system acting on gonadotropins in the anterior pituitary the release of gonadotropins lh and fsh act on the gonads for the development and maintenance of proper adult reproductive physiology so since this patient was resulting uh, since this patient was suffering from hypogonadotropic hypogonadism there was a reduction in lh and fsh which usually acts on the reproductive organs in a person hence maybe the patient was suffering from anovulation and amenorrhea management and intervention for this condition further investigation full blood count liver and renal function should all be monitored as these are affected in severe disease a bone scan should be arranged to check for bone density hypoestrogenism as a result of anorexia is likely to induce early onset osteoporosis and fractures as we all know estrogen plays an important role in maintaining the bone density so since this patient has reduced levels of estradiol she may likely suffer from early onset of osteoporosis and fractures so bone scan is necessary in this patient psychological assessment is also important to guide appropriate treatment management for this patient encouraging the women to eat a more normal diet and to avoid exercising is the ideal management but anorexia is a chronic disease that is often refractory to treatment explanation that her periods will return if she increases her bmi may possibly encourage her to put on weight so the patient should be explained about anorexia nervosa and uh, she should be given psychological support since she thinks certain diets is going to affect her weight and she is conscious about it so if the physician explains her that uh, upon increasing her weight and uh, maintaining a good bmi her periods might return she might be encouraged to have a better diet the combined oral contraceptive pill should be prescribed in the meantime which will prevent osteoporosis and ring on her menstruation albeit pharmacologically induced so a combined oral contraceptive pill would contain both estrogen and progesterone hormones so it would help her to avoid any sort of side effects that might result with reduced levels of estradiol referral to a specialist eating disorders unit is vital in addressing the long term problem for this woman commonly eating disorders arise out of childhood difficulties and family or group therapy should be considered if the investigation suggests renal or hepatic impairment then inpatient management is likely to be necessary so that's it for today's session thank you for watching thank you